So I'm going to be talking to you uh, about my project Flight of the Monarchs, which is an audiovisual immersive uh, installation in its first um, iteration. I'm going to be performing um, uh, a fixed media plus live stream version of the piece tomorrow in um, the evening concert. Um, and uh, ideas behind that should become clear as I uh, go through the talk. So, um, the piece itself is inspired by the incredible 3,000 mile migration that the Monarch Butterfly performs every year from uh, Canada to Mexico uh, to find warmer climes over the winter. Um, there are actually four generations uh, per year. Um, generations one to three only live for about two months each, but it's the fourth generation um, that grow these amazing muscles that enable them to fly south and actually live for eight months. Um, and it's only in February. Um, they, so they, they start migrating down in October. Um, they overwinter in Mexico. Uh, and then in February, they start mating. And March, they start flying north to Texas, where they lay uh, their eggs on um, the milkweed uh, plants. The installation uh, itself was uh, created for the Amy Johnson Festival in Hull, who um, actually was a uh, theme carrying on seamlessly from the, the previous talk, uh, a famous aviatrix. Uh, she was the first person to do uh, a solo flight from the UK to um, Australia, and she did famously also die in uh, an air crash. Um, so um, there is bizarrely um, a, a segue into uh, my talk. Um, but the festival itself um, was uh, more generally um, inspired and asking for um, works uh, inspired by uh, flight. Um, so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to uh, create this piece. So the journey uh, for me started in 2015 when I traveled out to the El Rosario Reserve in southern Mexico, um, which is one of the um, four main monarch butterfly reserves uh, in uh, Mexico. And um, I was particularly interested in the fact because they swarm in their millions, um, it's possible to hear the rushing of their tiny wings and uh, as a field recordist and sound artist I thought it was an interesting challenge uh, to see uh, if I would be able to uh, capture that. Um, so that was my, my first sort of impetus to go out there. Once I was there I also recorded and uh, uh, filmed uh, the butterflies. Uh, and it turned into a collaboration with Mexican poet Rolando Rodriguez um, and the videos were also edited by Jessica uh, Rodriguez. Um, the installation itself is uh, built to resemble a hide in a forest. It's a wooden structure with four video screens, one above you, one in front to the side, and also uh, four channel uh, surround sound. Um, and the idea, very simply, um, is to really to kind of transport you uh, from your current location uh, to uh, the El Rosario Reserve, as if you're looking out at the butterflies. Um, the sound uh, component um, actually has three layers to it. Um, the first one is, a, a, is field recordings, um, which include the rushing of tiny wings uh, from the location. There's also the specially uh, commissioned poem uh, from Rolando Rodriguez. And finally, um, uh, there is an improvisation, which is a collaboration between myself on flute, uh, American uh, musician and percussionist um, uh, David Blink on hand pan, and um, uh, John Sanders on accordion. Um, and this improvisation was actually something that happened very serendipitously on the same day that I had recorded uh, the butterflies. Um, and there was a chance meeting, we decided to record that. And I wanted to find something which uh, was a glue to hold um, all of this together. And so I also processed uh, the installation and what I was, uh, sorry, the, 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 the uh, improvisation. And part of the reasoning behind this was to try to create a sense of timelessness, like uh, kind of Kairos um, 
approach to time that uh, Rupert was talking about um, earlier. So the entire installation itself is supposed to be a, 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 an environment which takes you to that, hopefully uh, quite immediately, into something more of a trance-like state and a timeless state and transporting you to that place. And there are all different, uh, all of the layers are almost different ways of experiencing that place. Um, the videos are all different loops, uh, different lengths of time. So as the installation loops throughout a day, the visual relationship between those um, changes and unfolds. And equally with the sound layer, I just did some simple processing where I time stretched the initial uh, improvisation two times, four times, eight times, 16 times, etc., and layer those on top of each other. So there are, again, shifting relationships between uh, that material with a quite a static um, harmonic um, base to it. Um, and it's just another uh, example of what it looks like. I've got a short uh, interview from a documentary uh, where you can see a little bit more of that initial installation. Composer and sound artist, this piece in particular has been inspired by the incredible journey that the monarch butterfly uh, performs every year from Canada to Mexico, which is actually 3,000 miles. Um, they swarm in their millions uh, to these roosting grounds in uh, southern Mexico. One thing that caught my attention particularly because of my interest in sound is that because they swarm in their millions, uh, you can actually hear this incredible sort of rushing of these millions of tiny wings when they, when they fly. So the idea is that you walk in and you're kind of immersed as if you were transported to southern Mexico and you're inside this hive looking out at the forest. There's a long Mexican uh, tradition, sort of folklore, believe that they're the souls of the dead returning year upon year to revisit the living. And one of the layers that we'll be seeing uh, tomorrow is a kind of split screen version. Um, So uh, I basically explained uh, most of people's roles uh, in that project already. Um, recent presentations include the New York uh, Electroacoustic Music Festival. Uh, we took the installation to the Eden Project for five days uh, in the summer. Um, and that was in conjunction with the Balance Unbalance Conference at Plymouth University, which uh, is bringing together artists and scientists to examine different ways that we can uh, try to solve or deal with uh, the current uh, environmental crisis, um, but then took it straight to the Shambhala Festival um, in um, the middle of England and then Music Ports in Whitby. Uh, we've got some volunteers and student projects at the top. Um, I think my favourite presentation of the work though was at Shambhala where we were able to actually uh, in, install it in the woods, so you're taking from the English countryside to uh, southern Mexico. Now I'm going to talk about uh, kind of uh, the next uh, phase, I suppose, of the, the project. Um, this is from a very recent field trip in January of this year. Um, I wanted to uh, go back to um, a Monarch uh, Butterfly Reserve uh, and learn more about uh, their amazing life cycle and some of the um, environmental threats that they face, uh, including crop spraying, um, illegal logging of their uh, breeding grounds and climate change. Um, so I um, was put in touch with uh, uh, Pablo Jaramillo, um, who's the second in from the right there, who's a, a monarch scientist. Um, David Blink um, is the guy right on the right hand side who played Hang um, in uh, the soundtrack that you heard. Um, then we also have Rolando uh, Rodriguez um, at, at the top right. And also by my left is uh, Franco um, Ramirez, who has been able to um, enable a Wi-Fi network in a very remote 
village of uh, Macheros, uh, which is close to Cerro Pelon, which is the mountain that we're uh, on top of. Um, and that was the, the reserve that we visited. Um, the reason that he is there is because uh, more recently I've become interested in live streaming of soundscapes. Uh, part of that, um, from an artistic point of view, um, is, uh, is something in line with my um, interest in phenomenology um, and a kind of continuation from that initial um, installation. Um, but also there's the obvious um, scientific um, monitoring aspect um, to uh, utilising live streams. Um, so uh, this is a, the lo a screenshot of the Locus Sonus sound map, which is an open microphone network, um, and uh, it incorporates uh, screen boxes around the world, so you can uh, live stream uh, soundscapes. Uh, I think I've got one from uh, Costa Rica here. I might need to reload that. Come back to that in a second. Um, but I worked with the UK organisation Soundcamp, who made two stream boxes. Uh, these are made from Raspberry Pi um, computer uh, with a charge controller, two Omni microphones on either side of the stream box to create uh, a nice binaural image, and then you attach that to a uh, solar uh, battery and a uh, solar panel. Um, so we managed somehow to hoik this thing up uh, partly on horseback and partly on people's backs um, to uh, an appropriate location where we were able to have enough sunlight, enough 3G coverage, and actually somewhere close enough to the monarch butterflies and that somewhere was actually going to pick up uh, enough of the um, soundscape within the forest. Um, so they, they designed and uh, uh, built the, um, the screen boxes. Um, and this is actually part of a larger project called uh, Biosphere Soundscapes, which is run by Australian sound artist um, Leah Barclay. Um, and uh, Biosphere Soundscapes is uh, working with uh, the UNESCO Biosphere Reserves. There's uh, over um, 660 UNESCO Biosphere Reserves around the world. And the idea is to um, use sound as one method of um, recording change in those environments over time. And uh, the most recent uh, iteration of that is the Biome project, which is incorporating the live stream soundscapes as a resource for people around the world to uh, tap into. <laughs> She's also developed uh, an, uh, an app called Orality, um, which kind of links in with the, the idea of um, kind of uh, the, the, the mo mobility of ambient soundscapes and uh, uh, at the, uh, the recent uh, Paris Climate Talks she was able to superimpose um, sounds of Amazonian river systems onto Paris so that these are some sort of geotagged locations and, and so walking through the streets of Paris you can be again transported in sound to the Amazon so we want to incorporate this live stream into the app uh, to spread more awareness and Potentially, um, we've got some other partners building up in Canada and Texas all along the migratory route of the monarchs, so eventually we'd like to get a stream box um, all the way along that uh, migratory route. Um, this is uh, the vista that you can look out um, at from the stream box. Um, so the stream box itself is kind of hidden in the bushes. It's a little bit of a, a Ryko shield there, and the, the, the plastic box has the... Uh, solar um, battery in it and the solar panel on top of that. Um, and I've got a recording from the live stream that we made about three weeks ago. Playing that was I talk because I think in a, in a second you hear some nice close uh, stuff, some hummingbird wings, um, and you get a sense of the binaural image as well. Um, but within that recording, there um, we are able to share this with uh, the Monarch Watch community. You can hear a bee in the background there, um, and uh, they're able to identify two um, bird species which are uh, predators of the uh, monarch butterflies uh, from that. Um, 
Iya. Now, unfortunately, today I'm not able to play you the live stream, um, as this is very much a pilot stage of the project. Uh, there are a lot of challenges uh, with that, we think, because it's been um, overcast for about the past six days, the, so the uh, battery is uh, run down, um, and the charge controller we currently have won't reboot automatically, but we are sending someone up today, and it is my hope that we'll have the live stream working by tomorrow. If not, you'll have a recording version of, of, the, of the stream, but such is uh, technology. Um, so, this second time I was able to uh, get an ambisonic uh, sound field recording of the, of the butterflies. In fact, this is the first day that we, we got there. Each day, um, they, they actually roost right up in the, at the top of the mountain, above 10,700 feet, um, where the oyamel trees grow. Um, but if it's hot enough, they, they need, their metabolisms are such that they need to have direct sunlight um, in order to fly. If it's hot enough, they'll come down um, to this uh, uh, valley and uh, drink water. And this is what we saw when we got there. So, yeah, they're literally swarming in their millions. Yeah, there's a little bit of sound on this originally, just from the iPhone camera. Um, and just uh, going to slow-mo for a second, you get a sense. Actually, the, they use gliding a lot um, in their flight behavior, particularly when they're migrating um, to sort of ride thermal currents. Um, sound recordings. Now, these were quite quiet, oh, actually, yeah. So this is the same meadow, um, but on a day where there are no butterflies there. This is what it sounds like. Quite a subtle sound, but that was about five five into the microphone. <laughs> um, and just in the last five minutes or so, just to wrap up, um, another aspect to the project um, is to continue another research interest of mine in terms uh, again thinking with um, concepts of phenomenology um, and um, Charles Alston, the composer, talks about us as, as being part of the environment and um, for, for big parts of Western history to sort of see ourselves more as, uh, separate from it. Um, and uh, it's the idea of experience being built into that. So uh, with David, uh, done some performances amongst the butterflies. So um, the idea is to put together actually an album stroke DVD of different performance situations, all recorded with a single microphone. So um, this is all recorded with um, uh, a sound field microphone. Uh, this this particular the soundtrack on on here is just from my my iPhone. We have several other cameras around that I haven't put that together yet. But um, yeah, the idea is to get the mix. Uh, between the environmental sounds and the acoustic and the instruments by positioning ourselves at different points uh, from the microphone. Oh yeah, um, the temperature differences are quite great. Um, so this is uh, an unfortunate butterfly that was there overnight and froze. Um, this is a, another um, performance uh, you see in the valley and you have these quite steep sides um, to that. Uh, and I just want to finish with a recording, um, slightly reminiscent, I think, of uh, the flute in uh, the cave. Um, so again, we're utilising or responding to uh, the space itself and um, the uh, acoustic. Again, this might be 
what oh yeah yeah so this is the uh, trumpet and flute in that same location that I was showing you There's no additional processing, it's all recorded with one microphone. Um, perhaps some of you are familiar with uh, David Dunn's <coughs> Nexus One uh, might uh, uh, be reminiscent of uh, his piece um, uh, within the uh, Grand Canyon. Um, so this is kind of where the, the project is up to. I'm going to be travelling back in March. We're going to be making some hardware updates to the uh, Streambox but um, we also have a contingent of scientists and artists coming from California and more from uh, Mexico. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to give you all an update on uh, how that project um, is proceeding um, over time and uh, you'll get a chance to experience the piece tomorrow. <laughs>